That was Arcade Fire. This is XFM. Good morning. Josh Whittacombe, joined, as always, by producer Neil. Morning, Josh. Morning. How are you? That's a new catchphrase. Uh, you, uh, you, you, good week? Uh, not bad, thank you very much. Yes. But how's being a new father? Tiring? Very tiring this week, yeah. It's oh, okay. We've, we've got three hours now. You, from my, my understanding, all you do is press buttons anyway, so you'll be fine. <laughs> we, could, we could get one of those things that Homer Simpson has, that little bird that just rocks. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could get another three hours. <laughs> well, it, 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 I, I fail to come... I mean, I feel quite guilty, because obviously you're tired. You're almost being punished for looking after a life. Whereas I'm, I'm just, you know, <laughs> relaxing, enjoying my life. I had a lion the other day. Have you had one of them recently? No. No. <laughs> Sleep is a stranger. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good, Neil. That's good. Um, if you do fall asleep in the next three hours, I will be disappointed. Um, as always, you've kind of... You've come centre stage again. Um, last week, um, you did a um, you did some shout-outs. And um, and this week, uh, we've had more requests. What we've done is created a monster, much like much like you and your wife. What we've done <laughs> is created a monster. Hey, what's your what's your tone? Uh, well, you, uh, yeah. So um, you've you've been asked to do some more shout outs. I have, yeah. Um, so last week I did them in a pirate radio style. Yeah. And then this week you wanted me to do them in a local radio style. We did, we did. Yeah. I even had someone come up to me last night uh, at my gig and ask for a shout out for their hair salon. Um, which if they, if they knew, you know, what, what kind, what kind of trendy haircuts me and you have, then maybe they wouldn't have, but I uh, say, so you, you're just folding it up there. Yeah, I can't quite read your writing. Can, can you I, not? I think I'll be all right. I'll, uh, I'll wing it. it. Yeah. You'll wing it. I'll wing it. I don't know if reading is something you can wing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't think reading aloud is something you, I think reading aloud is something you either get right or get wrong. Well, we'll soon see. Because otherwise, it is. It's, like if you wing it and get it wrong, it's it's not a shout out to that hair salon. It's a shout out to a completely different one, which is fair enough. Okay. I mean, the, I'm sure the other one would be quite pleased <clears throat> to get a kind of. They'd almost get a caught in the crossfire. <laughs> right. So uh, you're going to do some local radio shout outs. Yeah. I, I, this, so this week I spent some time listening to local radio to kind of find some phrases that are kind of key oh, yeah, and are nice. used. So um, here we, we go. Okay. Here we go. Good morning, listeners, if you're out there. Hope the, uh, the time and <laughs> of this day is treating you well. So, uh, oh, you've been in touch on the uh, overly long text message because we don't have a short code. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, Kelly, Kelly's been in touch on the, uh, on the SMS, as the kids call it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she's going to buy some toys this morning. Uh, Dave's off to a car boot sale. Oh, I thought you just love car boot sales. <laughs> just, well, what I find, though, is when I go to one to sell stuff, I come back with more than I uh, than I took in the first place. Yeah, that's very good. That's and, very true, actually. Very true. And uh, that's, that's my producer there, Josh, just chipping in. <laughs> and, and uh, oh, a last-minute edition. I've just been handed a piece of paper. Not that you get that these days. It's always an email or fax, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> hello to everyone at uh, Headmasters in Warminster, uh, especially Lewis. Lewis, I hope you have a fantastic day and uh, keep up keep up some of those great haircut uh, techniques you've got going on. There. That's good, actually. I really like that. <laughs> I think I think you've got a future. If pirate radio doesn't work out for <laughs> local radio, it certainly will. I, I I think I enjoyed that more than pirate radio because um because it really spoke to me slightly more. Um, <laughs> next, uh, any ideas for next week's shoutouts? Uh, we, well, any any suggestions on the text, you know, radio format? What style? I, 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 I kind love. of think Shock Jock might be quite a good one. Okay. <laughs> talk, talk, talk radio Shock Jock. Right. Um, so, um, we'll, but we'll see how it goes. Um, if you want a shout out from Neil, and frankly, who doesn't? Because uh, I mean, this is going to run and run, isn't it? Oh. You're actually quite a good actor. That's what we're testing. Can we take off the take heart music? It's putting me off. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Podcast XFM. We get to the point uh, of the morning, 20 past 10, when it's now become a kind of date in our diary that we should be doing any other business. Week three. And it's it's, it's got a life of its own. Um, if we think the shout-out's got out of control, uh, if you, any other business is... Um, we, we've, we're looking for feedback on any factual errors we make. Any extra trip? Basically, anything. Is that what we're saying, Neil? Is that how you should? Yeah, we we make the show for the listener, so therefore the listener needs input. That's what yes. I'm saying. Yes. Okay. So uh, we've we've had some emails in about last week's show. Um, these are, I mean, and uh, whether we, it's up to you whether we uphold or whether we uh, reject their uh, their uh, their business. So uh, the first one is from Kieran Gibson. Hi, Josh. Stroke producer Neil. Excellent start. I think I think it's good that we've got <laughs> equal billing there. 
Uh, other people have just, they haven't even bothered saying hi. So, uh, already, <laughs> already Kieran Gibson is, uh, you know, slightly ahead of the game. Firstly, thank you for upholding the point I raised last week regarding Neil's phone number on the AOB feature. No worries, Kieran. Any time. I would like to also now, in return, uphold the point you raised back to me, Josh, about using both full and shortened versions of the feature title. I guess this was for clarity purposes, in case the T-boy was left to sort out the emails too. I think it's only fair that this feature is allowed to be a two-way process. Now, I, I resent the fact that he thinks we've got a T-boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, the, th the mere thought that it's not just me and you manning the, the bunker here... Last week, um, Jack D was uh, very excited that I made him the tea. I, th oh, I thought that was one of, one of the highlights of the week, really. So, um, what are your views on it, Neil? I uh, yeah, I'm going to um, dismiss. Yeah, I, I think I think so. I think particularly when I tell you that the next one is probably the greatest email we've ever received. Okay. So, um, you know, just brace yourself, Neil. So this is from Tom Jones. Don't know if it is the Tom Jones. I can only presume it is. Hi. Was amused. <laughs> Thank you very much. Was amused by your comedic riffing on the Fresh Prince's journey from West Philadelphia to Bel Air. I feel compelled to point out that such a taxi journey would not have taken place down Route 66, as Josh quipped. <laughs> Route 66 was removed for the American highway system in 1985. <laughs> Whereas the Fresh Prince first arrived in 1990. I appreciate that this was a throwaway line. However, I strongly feel that you should have a basic working knowledge of the history of American highway infrastructure if you're going to present a light-hearted entertainment show on XFM. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. No question. No upheld. question. Upheld. Upheld. That's, to say that's exactly what we're looking for is the understatement of a lifetime. And um, I'm disappointed I didn't know that about Route 66. So I, I'm slightly... Um, I mean, uh, while we're upholding your complaint, my, my dreams of going down Route 66 like Thelma and Louise, who I don't know if did go down Route 66, so Tom, do not email in on that, because <laughs> I have already done my own any other business there. <laughs> Natasha Swain. Um, <laughs> I'm going on a road trip, and I'm in charge of the mix CD. So far, I have the claim as 5,000 miles on it about seven times. Any ideas for other songs? Love from Australia and Natasha. Who doesn't seem to understand what the feature is about? <laughs> I, I don't think we're just... We're not, we're not just a helpline, or are we? Are we allowed to answer stuff like that? Uh, I'm going to dismiss it, because what she's failed to notice is that this show is available as a podcast that she could listen to <laughs> on her road trip. Very good. So, so basically, Natasha, you could keep... The, well, I'd get rid of the Proclaimers, but if you desperately want the Proclaimers 500 miles, just that followed by, you know, bookending each, each podcast as a kind of palate cleanser between each one, so that you kind of feel like the week's moved on. I think that rounds up any other business. If you have any other business on this week's show, you know the email. Uh, you know, it's well, contact us at xfm.co.uk. xfm.co.uk. Josh Whittaker. And now, probably for the first time ever, it's after 10.30 and it's time to reveal what we want to talk about, Neil. We're getting later and later. <laughs> There's more and more any other business coming in. Um, now, we, uh, we, have, we, we always have a meeting. I mean, I don't want to, uh, you know, reveal what's going on. But they, we plan this show. I mean, as, as astonishing as that sounds. <laughs> and uh, we had a meeting this week to discuss it in uh, my local cafe, Maison d'Etre, on Highbury Corner. Very nice. Excellent coffee. Um, you know, do, do drop in there. <laughs> and um, you found it too trendy. I was just uncomfortable. There were there was facial hair I wasn't comfortable with in that cafe. There were haircuts that were just defying physics. There was yeah. a menu that you've mentioned before about. I think they sell toasted bread rather than toast. Yeah, but I mean, if you can't keep up with it, it's 2013. But the real the real thing that stuck in your craw mm. was um, that rather than uh, glasses for their tap water, uh, they had uh, they had washed out jars. Why? Why? Well, it's, you know, it's just, just reimagining what the uh, drinking, you know, beaker could be, could be like. <laughs> just reimagining what a tumbler could be, mate. Do you not, you not, you not up with that in Reading? No, don't, no, no, there's no need for it. See, the, this, so this is the thing. Now you've you've got issues with this kind of thing. Um, I mean, we weren't even in East London. If if you went to Shoreditch, your mind would explode. <laughs> Or for Manchester listeners, the Northern Quarter. But, um... I like the Northern Quarter. I've been there a few times. Well, uh, you'd be dangerously close to drink out of a, of a mug. Uh, not, uh, you know, not a, even a mug, mate. You know, water out of a mug, or coffee out of a vase. <laughs> or, you know, pina colada out of your hands. 
Sounds like my uni house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you think that's the problem with Maison Dutch? They just hadn't washed up. <laughs> <laughs> it was they, they had got glasses. They just, you know, they were very busy. It's just part of the jars. People, people will drink it. They'll think it's fashionable. So we wanted um, off the back of this. Um, when cafes and shops have tried too hard to be trendy, any little things that they've tried that thought would be cool. Um, Wall decorations, plates on walls uh, is another one that does my head in. Because mm -hmm. particularly when they run it, when you haven't got any glasses to drink water out, if you've got plates on the wall, you're just showing off. Um, it looks like you've shown off about eating your dinner. <laughs> just gotta finish that, put that off on the wall. Um, so um, that's one. We want uh, we want any text on things you've uh, that have you know annoyed you as much as Neil on when cafes and shops have tried to be trendy, and also. Um, on the subject of Stephen Merchant coming in, uh, his new sitcom Hello Ladies, currently on Sky Atlantic, yeah, about um, about the failure of the lead character to uh, land, you know, a relationship. And uh, on this, we wanted um, times when you didn't read the signals. Yeah. Had any of that? Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't really have had to prompt you there. I was giving you clear signals to tell your anecdote. <laughs> Walked into it. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I was thinking not just about picking up the opposite sex or relationships and stuff. When, because my story about this is, I was sitting in a car with a friend and his mum, and we had mm. another friend call on Bluetooth, so mm. it was coming through the speaker. Bluetooth. Well, it's Bluetooth through yeah. the car stereo. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. I just yeah. didn't realise it was ninety nine head. And basically, he he started to kind of go into quite graphic detail about uh, an encounter he'd had with a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and we were trying to, we were trying to really just shut him up because obviously we knew what our yeah, friend's mum was yeah, in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why when you answer in a car, if you phone someone in a car, they'll always go, "I'm in the car with Kevin. How are you?" <laughs> <laughs> and you think, oh, I mean, that makes it makes it more awkward as it is. <laughs> Worse is when you're in the car and someone's having a conversation and they haven't been primed that you're in the car and you can't join in the conversation. I, I, I prefer to be out of the car than in the car. It, it, I mean, that's a, that's one for another day, out or in the car <laughs> situations. But, um, yeah, times when you didn't read the signals, uh, whether that be relationships or Bluetooth <laughs> or anything, really. Um, so, as always, we play fast and loose with the topics, I think, so do whatever you want with them, really. Josh Widdicombe. Uh, we are joined by our resident literary czar, comedian, star of Bad Ops, Matthew Crosby. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I am very good. I'm very good. I'm excited, Matthew, because uh, so far, you know, we, we've, we've straddled the middle brow, as always, but along you come. Who's a, you're a fan of not just books, but a specific type, celebrity autobiographies, and who's... The celebrity autobiography, the highest form of literature there is. Exactly. And this week, who will we be hearing from? Well, um, I'm calling you live from the All Tomorrow's Party Festival at Canberra Sands. So oh. I thought I would, I would pick somebody from rock and roll history. I'm sitting in my bunk bed, and obviously I took some reading with me, and I brought who could be more uh, in, entrenched in the world of rock and roll than, of course, Heather Mills McCartney. Oh, yes. Uh, as she was when she wrote this book. I believe she's now since Dr. The McCartney. The thing from uh, Man's Adam uh, Hills. <laughs> See if you can guess. What she has, uh, what she's called her book. Well, is it? I mean, it, you're hoping it's going to be a pun. Aren't I know you? we're on dangerous ground here. We're, we're on, on dangerous ground, ground. but you're, you're a is, uh, has she entered dangerous ground with the title? She has indeed. Okay, is it something like best foot forward? It's oh no, you know that would have been better. She's gone for a single step. A single, <laughs> which is kind a of a word. which is is pretty much uh, it's bang on the money, isn't it? Yeah. Really, I mean. I wouldn't think it was possible to put me off the book more, but she's managed to do it. <laughs> so, um, and, and what, what, um, what, what, what will you be reading from it, Matthew? Well, uh, I, 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 I'll tell you very, very quickly. I'm just going to really, really quickly first before we get into the section mm. where, which actually features uh, Sir Paul himself. Uh, I'll just exciting. tell you this: it, this is the, the, her getting fired from her first job, right? Now, in terms of like a, uh, in terms of like a sob story. This isn't the worst one I've ever heard in my life. Uh, but it, it's written as if it's a, it's a complete tragedy. Anyway, check this out. Okay. Uh, she started working in a, uh, in a croissant shop. <laughs> okay? And uh, the, uh, the job carried one major perk. You can eat as many croissants as you like. The owner promised one day I started. Uh, just help yourself. The poor man didn't know what he was saying. <laughs> After months of going hungry at the fair and under the arches, I could eat like a horse. Soon... I was getting through 15 croissants a day. <laughs> Blimey! After four months, 
you're eating too many croissants, and that was that. So that was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? And to think, I thought, to think I thought Paul McCartney was the most flaky thing she indulged in, eh? <laughs> Am I right, guys? Am I right? Hello? Well, Hello? Well, You're still I'm on. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this even further because, because um, this, this for me, this story I'm going to read you about, about her, mm. the first time Paul McCartney played her a song over the oh. phone is, is, is absolutely baffling. Okay, I'm looking uh, forward and, to this. Let's, let's see if we can un unpick why. <clears throat> okay, here we go. My mobile phone rang. It was Paul. I'm glad you specified the mobile phone. That is very, very important <laughs> as this story comes on. My mobile phone rang. It was Paul. Heather, I've written this song for you. Oh, no. He said he'd been sitting in the hotel thinking about me and missing me. His room overlooked Central Park, and he looked out of his big plate glass window at the bare trees, all ghostly in the mist. That is definitely the product of uh, Pamela Cockrell, who assisted Heather Mills McCartney in the writing of this book. <laughs> There's always somebody who assists in the writing yeah. of this book. So that is definitely her work there. All ghostly in the mist. And he just sat down and written a song. I want you to hear it. I'll put the phone down and go and play it. I heard his footsteps going away, and then very faintly the sound of a piano playing and Paul singing. When he came back to the phone, I had to tell him I hadn't been able to hear the song. <laughs> now, of course, bear in mind, she is talking to Paul on a mobile phone. This was around, yeah. I, I reckon, probably around 2000, okay? 2001, yeah. maybe. So what does Paul do? Of course, he takes the mountain to Mohammed. <laughs> the next thing I heard was a rumbling noise, and he dragged the piano across the room <laughs> to the phone. <laughs> Paul told me later the piano was a magnificent black Steinway. I still wonder if it was ever the same afterwards, <laughs> right? Hang on a moment. Listen, Paul said. It's called Loving Flame. He started playing ag again, and this time I could hear. So are you telling me that Paul McCartney, <laughs> possibly the most successful musician of all time, doesn't own a mobile phone? Does, but he does have the strength in his 60s to drag a piano across a hotel room. <laughs> to drag a piano. One the of the most... For love, eh? Do you know the what, Matthew? I think that's the most astonishing story we have heard. Um, so, um, I believe it is. I, in honour of it, we are going to play. Um, we're going to play the Beatles, but um, I do feel like um, I like I like to imagine before this recording session, all the recording equipment's dragged into the studio by McCartney and maybe we assisted can't do the by George. We've got to do it in Studio B. We've got to do it in Studio <laughs> B, guys. Don't worry, says Macca. Rolls up his sleeves, gets to work. Josh Widdicom, XFM. Vicky Clyro. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, that was like... That was like they were listening in and decided to play an extra note to annoy me. So that is Clyro on XFM. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is Josh Widder. Come on, a Saturday morning. We, we are discussing two things. If you want to uh, see the uh, picture of Neil annoyed that he had to drink water out of a jar in a trendy cafe, then um, we have tweeted it, and I can tell you it's probably not worth seeing. But uh, <laughs> It's not. It's no. not. But he did get to use his app. <laughs> in which uh, in which he managed to split two photos and make it one very exciting um now uh we we've got a uh, that that actually uh that led to us asking um things that annoy you uh, when cafes and shops try too hard to be pretentious not well just trendy and um two people have come in with the same one very quickly which is um this is o marie turner and someone who's hasn't got a name but their phone number does end two six four three so you know if you know them <laughs> Say hello. Both annoyed at being, food being served on planks of wood. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I imagine that. I, I mean, I think with this one, we're just going to go to Neil on all of these. How do, you, how do you feel about the plank of wood? Annoyed, yeah, because you end up getting li little bits of wood as well. If you've I got mean, a burger... It's more of a chopping board. It's not a plank... It's not like a bit of two-by-four. No, but it's still annoying, because if it's wood and you've got, like, a steak knife, you kind of hack into the wood so you get a little bit of... Bit of wood. Well, a bit of wood. And also Isn't wood quite good for you? I'm, I'm not a beaver. Full of woodly goodness. I don't know. No? No. And also, serving things on slate. So, oh, slate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, I will I will get on board with this. Yeah. But, you know, do you not think the plate has had its day? No, because, like, for something like steak I, or I a don't. burger... I don't. I'm just saying it because I knew it would wind you up, but it really worked. <laughs> for something like steak or a burger that's got juices, they stay yeah. on a plate. So you, you, can, you can mop them up. What would you have? You'd have a bowl. No, I don't... I Ideally, haven't. you'd serve in a kind of... In a bucket. That's how you'd like to eat, isn't it? Yeah. Or a feed bag. Trough. A trough. <laughs> I, imagine, I imagine there is a cafe in East London that feeds people out of troughs. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to trough? Yeah, it's great, yeah. I've had a great time, yeah. 
Why, why is your face covered in blood? Well, it was quite intense. <laughs> Um, the, the, if you've got any more, uh, that mainly just send them into, and then we'll, we'll throw them to Neil to see if it winds them up. He, I mean, he's, he's quite angry because he hasn't had much sleep as it is, but this is the final nail in the coffin. The idea that people have to eat off slate. Um, when cafes and shops try too hard to be trendy, uh, anything like that. Shops as well as cafes we're looking for, because that can... I, I don't like an empty shop. You know, yeah. like a trendy empty shop. The other thing we're talking about um, is um, mixed signals, and when you've misread the signals. This one, from Rachel, whose listener name is Rachel Bad Teacher from Brixton. I mean, I don't know whether she means that in a kind of cool way, as if she's down with the kids or if she's just very bad at her job. I would guess it's the latter, considering her text, which I don't know if it applies to the topic, but I do like. I think she's just trying to get it off her chest. I accidentally mixed signals last night. I unintentionally lent on the voice message function on WhatsApp and sent a man I'm supposed to be going on a date with tonight a voice message of me drunkenly stroking my cat and telling him how soft he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not hap- that That's like something from a sitcom, isn't it? That doesn't happen. <laughs> also, I mean, why are you getting drunk with your cat? <laughs> the night before a date, that's like going, well, this, if this date doesn't go well, this really is the signal of life for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, amazing. I don't, if Rachel, presume, I was going to say if Rachel is listening, if she's not, then it's a very weird text. Rachel, I, I would like more details on whether he replied and whether you're still on for the date tonight. I think I think we we can file that under to be continued. Josh Whittaker Podcast XFM. Block party, two more years on XFM. Block party. Uh, Neil, fa- did you uh, fail to turn my mic on then? Yeah, sorry. What you've done there is you've undermined me in front of our <laughs> guest from the off. Uh, welcome, Stephen Merchant. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here, gentlemen. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming in. Did your producer ever, um, you know, undermine you slightly when you used to be here? Well, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yes. I, I, yes, I'm I mean... Say- well, I mean, he, he's both undermined and, of course, made the show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If only the same could be said. <laughs> are you not? Are you not a moron, Neil? <laughs> uh, I actually am. Yeah. You are because I tell you that was the thing. And when we started asking him questions, and it turned out he was an absolute <laughs> idiot, we couldn't believe our luck. Oh, I was still waiting on Neil to. We're, we're trying to find where the uh, where the idiocy lays, but <laughs> so far so good. Now, you, you as a former XFM disc jockey, yeah. You were uh, you phoned in for the first time I did this show? Yeah, uh, back in January. Doesn't it feel so long ago, Neil? Very long. Where's yeah. the you know the chemistry's really built since? You've been then. on since January. Yeah. Wow, that's well done. Thank I you. I honestly didn't think it would last that long. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that makes that makes you know a nation. Of yes. Us. Well, I th- you say a nation. I mean, that's a bit <laughs> that's a bit presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if you've seen the latest nis- listening figures, Steve. But... I don't think I need to. No. <laughs> it's not so much you, your show in particular. I just, uh, I think 95% of this country don't even know XFM exists. <laughs> it's not that they're choosing to, to ignore it. They just I, don't. I would say you've been out the country a while. And oh, things, things have changed. taken off. Yeah, okay. it's, I mean, there's at least 8% now of the country All right, that are, okay. you know, a- at least aware that they're not tuning in. <laughs> they're not tuning in. <laughs> Um, you gave me some advice on yeah. the first show. Um, we'll, we'll play this back because uh, me and Neil have obviously really built on our, on that first show and attempted to implement the advice. Neil's uh, Neil's cut it up here, so here it is. Tell you what I'm enjoying. You're keeping it light. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, I don't want to switch on a radio on a Saturday morning and hear your opinions on world events. <laughs> I don't want to know what's going on in the universe. I don't want to hear the news. I like the fact that if I switch on Josh Widdicombe, <laughs> there could be a nuclear attack and you're going to be talking about the most amusing thing you found stuck to your shoe. <laughs> That's right. Do you know what's good? Can I use that next week? Cause Have it. <laughs> cause I've Have got it, ideas now. It's actually got its own show now, that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Seven till ten in the evenings. What have you got on your show? <laughs> uh, so, obviously, we thought we'd go a bit high, brothers. Big things have happened, obviously, mm. since since January. It's been a big year. There's been, you know, the horse meat scandal, the royal baby, Syria. Sure. Um, do you want to go through some of our subjects, Neil? Some of the, the five subjects that went really well were um, pointless awards. Right, yeah. Uh, bad song memories. Bad song. I don't memories. even know what that is anymore. No, I don't know what that is. I was away that week, so um, I'm pinning. <laughs> so you're up. washing your hands. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Bad song memories. I uh, think that's. A, I think that's a typo. No. I think there was two subjects that week: bad songs and memories. Memories. You just opened it up to <laughs> memories. <laughs> Got any memories? Phone <laughs> <Let's> in. <know. laughs> um, and then the, the week we did the show from Birmingham, we did hometown facts. <laughs> Which wow. Is great. <laughs> 
Um, You've I'm, taken a national radio show and made it so local. <laughs> Such like local radio, it's extraordinary. Um, and then... Uh, Did you get heavily involved with children in need? <laughs> 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 and another flyer was, um, answer phone messages that weren't for you. Answer phone messages that weren't for you. Oh. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Can I get a Greatest Hits <laughs> compilation of this show? <laughs> Are these all downloadable as podcasts? <laughs> yeah, in fact, thank, good, good you say that, Steve, actually. Uh, yeah, one of the, one of the, you know, one of the, and, uh, the one podcasts th that's available. Oh, that's, that's a, that's a classic, yeah. One yeah. of the final ones that really went well was, um, Overheard on Tannoy's. <laughs> <laughs> Overheard on Tannoy's? Yeah. We've got and two weeks out of that. <laughs> We got one, sorry. We got two weeks out of that. <laughs> did people phone it? Because I'm not sure I remember things I've overheard on Tannoy's. Well, are, people, are your fans now, like, <laughs> jotting things down as they go about their business? I, I do say, between the t shows, if anything happens that you think is not an event in your life, please note it down, because we'll use it. Because I seem to recall we would ask for things like this, and no one would ever <laughs> <laughs> write in. Or just, it was just unreadable. It was just filth, <laughs> or kind of, just mental. Are you actually getting contributors? Yeah. yeah. Is there a couple of regulars? Have you got some eccentric regulars that you can depend on? Well, well, obviously, uh, I couldn't possibly say that for fear of, uh, of ostracising our only contributors. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, you know, we, we've, uh, we've received quite a few tweets on the tannoy thing what we what we'll do uh, in the final hour is we'll reprise some of our best tannoy no, oh right. please no i'd like to no i'm interested i'm interested honestly no i'd like to see the kind of responses you're getting and make a, a verdict on whether they're amusing or, or entertaining in any way or whether they're simply there to fill time <laughs> i think i think as, as as radio i think everything is simply there to fill time yeah, it is, isn't it really i mean this is x -Men, this isn't radio 4 so uh, right yeah, yeah. I mean, I often think, I mean, with all due respect to your listenership, just just put on a record. Oh, right. If you're a fan, of, you know, I don't mean you, I just, I just, they could go and put on a, just get a CD or maybe one of your digital formats, your MP3 players, not going to name any specifics. And if you like, say, the Foo Fires, pop them on for an hour. We don't need this banter in between, I say banter, this drivel in between, do you, do you, you know what I mean? Well, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to play the ed I'm going to play editors for fear of losing our final final sure. listeners. This is uh, sorry. This, this is, is not just about your show. I've always thought this about radio. <laughs> no, I don't know who's listening to the radio when they're doing the ironing. I don't know why they're not just listening to you know. Like you played the Beatles earlier. Help! There's a whole album there. There's a whole, if you like that one, there's a whole album of their songs. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you're listening. Huh? This is unbelievable. Yeah, I heard it, yeah. Well, they could have drive around it. I was. I asked him to switch it off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he's, he's one of our greatest contributors. He's, um, oh yeah, he when, loves the show. He loves whenever you fail to indicate a uh, traffic light. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Things you almost hit was a great feature. Josh Widdicombe. This is Josh Whittacombe, still joined by Stephen Merchant. Mm. Yeah, mm. sorry, I was yeah. just eating. Um, yeah, uh, you yeah. don't need to know what I'm doing. No, it's fine, it's fine. We, we you know, deconstructing and all that. Yeah, a little glimpse on. behind the glamour, isn't it, to see <laughs> that I'm eating a croissant. Yeah, chocolate one as well, so. You were talking about a feature you'd previously had, um, um, answer phone messages, was that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that weren't meant that for weren't you? That weren't meant for you. And I, I never had, a, I don't think I've had an answer phone message that wasn't meant for you, but I had a text that came through once, and it was from a, a number I didn't recognise, and I'm, I, it said something along the lines of, um, something like, hello, Paul. Dogging again tonight? <laughs> Usual place? <laughs> so, and, did you reply? Well, I, I just stared at it for ages. Because <laughs> firstly, I was thinking, like, is that a number I recognise? You know, is yeah. it someone I know? Because that's obviously the, where it becomes particularly yeah. worrying or interesting. <laughs> and I, obviously, I didn't reply. And then about a month and a half later, yeah. I got a message from the same number that when... Um, Hello, Paul. Any chance you can fit that sky dish? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know and what? I, I'm going to throw out an idea here. I reckon that Paul probably was fitting the sky dish illegally as well. Well, this is it. So th but this is what's interesting to me, right? So he, he says, hey, Paul, um, dogging again tonight, right? Yeah. Now, Paul doesn't write back, because I got yeah. the message meant for Paul, right? So I don't know if this person, let's call him Mr. X, yeah. did Mr. X go to the usual spot? <laughs> for the dog, no, not Paul. seeing Paul, Paul wasn't around, I, I think upset that Paul was a no-show. <laughs> but, or, like, did he just send off the dog and get no reply, but he's so tight with Paul that he doesn't, that he, <laughs> that he then, this the illegal sky dish fixer, <laughs> he doesn't say to him, well, that was weird that you didn't respond yeah. to the dogging thing, he just asks him about the sky dish. But did they meet, 
did they meet at a dogging event <laughs> and they were chatting whilst peering into a car going, what do you do then? I actually work for Sky. Yeah, I didn't suppose you could give me one on the slide. Could you? I probably could, mate, actually, yeah. Did he, or was it the other one? He came round to fix it, fix his Sky and he went, what are you into? Are you into uh, anything weird and perverted <laughs> involving cars? There's just so many unanswered questions. I, I, I think if someone had, if, if someone had stood me up when dogging, yeah. I'd see that as, um... An insult. That'd be an insult, right? Oh, that'd be the end, I think. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever come back from that. Unless there was a, a, a period in between where Paul and him <laughs> kind of, they made up. Yeah. And then he subsequently sent another error message to me. How do you even send it to the wrong phone? But that's the thing. If you're sending a message about dogging, I think you're being pretty cautious as to who, who you're sending yeah. it to. And, I mean, also, you'd presumably have the number of your dogging mate in your phone... Yeah. Why would you need... You wouldn't type in the number every time <laughs> and get one digit wrong and it comes unless to me. Unless, unless he was a new dog friend. extra phone. His dogging phone. <laughs> His dogging phone, <laughs> Which has, yeah. like, got no record of anything on it. Or Hey, if Paul's listening, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, I mean, Sky is expensive. Exactly. No, I understand that. I'm, by the way, I'm not advocating the uh, no, illegal no, uh, installation of Sky. Definitely not, no. Mm -hmm. no you've, I mean, As a Sky contributor myself. You've already, <laughs> exactly. You've already killed the medium of radio. The last <laughs> exactly, thing you need is digital yeah. television yeah. to fall in yeah. the, the next swipe. <laughs> Now, when you uh, when you did XFM, uh, obviously your producer we've already mentioned was Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Now I, I met Carl Pilkington. And I did Sunday brunch on Sunday, mm -hmm. and um, knocked a Swiss roll out of the park, shall I say? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> uh, but um, Car I uh, asked Carl if he had a message for you. So he's recorded a uh, he's recorded a little message for you. Sure. All right, Steve. It's Carl. How's it going? Um, Good to see you the other week. People always think I'm seeing you all the time, but I never, never really see you. But you can talk about that um, 36 aged steak and kidney pie I had. That's something to speak to uh, Josh about. Little link. Uh, <laughs> hope you're well on that. Give us a text. Um, yeah, I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> That's from. That's Paul. his message. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the best... He's, he's as charismatic as he always was, isn't Yeah, he? yeah. Well, that's very sweet of him, yeah. I said, record a nice message for Steve, and he said... I said, maybe something we could talk about. He said, the 36-year-old pie. Yeah. We, 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 we had lunch, and he had a steak, I think, that had been aged 36 days. Right. It wasn't a pie. <laughs> um... And that's, I mean, what do you want to know about the steak? Well, no, I, I, I'll be honest, when he said it, he seemed to imply that there was more anecdote to it than There's there was. almost nothing else. <laughs> I mean, I'm remembering the, the steak, I think, more clearly than he is. <laughs> uh, clearly a highlight of the lunch for him. Yeah. I don't recall there being anything else particularly of that lunch. How was it served? Oh, yeah, ne <laughs> Neil's got an issue with people who serve stuff on wood. Yeah, I kind of, I know what you mean. Yeah. I do kind of understand what you mean. Um, it may have been served on wood. You might be right. I also get annoyed when it's, um, those, you know, those kind of white tin cups, like the ones they used to have in the war. <laughs> you know, the ones <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. those were served your tea in there. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Okay. Normally served by a man with a moustache. <laughs> and it's not November. <laughs> and a no. jaunty hat. <laughs> and he looks at you like, you know, you know I'm in a band, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just... Yeah. This is not my real life. You might want to remember this moment, because in <laughs> yeah. two years' time, you'll be... You'll be playing me on XFM <laughs> exactly, yeah. to get yourself out of a corner. <laughs> um, do, do you think do you think trendies and moustaches resent Movember? Because they kind of blend in. I think they probably do. I think they're furious about Movember. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because I was talking to someone the other day about how it seems like when I was young, uh, there was very clear groups that you could that you could subscribe to. There was kind of the, there was a kind of mainstream look. You probably bought your clothes in Next or River Island. Yeah. Then you had this sort of alternative indie XFM type. Which yeah. is classically the kind of indie, you know, yeah. the, the floppy fringe, you know, the sort of baggy jumper, maybe a James branded <laughs> sweatshirt. Yeah. And then there's like the goths, you know, and, and but now I'm not, I can't quite distinguish what the groups are. It seems like the, the, the hipsters that you'll find in East London are exactly the same that you'll find in Brooklyn. Yeah. Probably. Like, it's like the internet has allowed everyone to just subscribe to the same hipster look. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like... Do, do you know when you said we weren't discussing the big topics, we've just uh, addressed globalisation. We have, haven't we? We have. God, we better play, we better play something. Let's quick. play something. Let, uh, let, have we got any Kaiser Chiefs? <laughs> <laughs> this is name. Josh Widdicombe. And here we are, it's Josh Riddicombe, Stephen Merchant's still here, joined now, as always, for the final hour by James A. Kester. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, thank you, mate. Yeah, my headphones are slipping. 
Now, I, I was explaining to Steve uh, earlier that you... Uh, I, mean, I don't know if this is unkind. Uh, I said you fulfil a kind of Carl-like role on the show. Oh, yeah, that's a massive compliment. Are you a moron? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully aware of how you used to treat Carl Pilkington, mate. <laughs> yeah. I did not want to fill that role. Well, it worked for him. <laughs> it did, he's doing well. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him, he's got his own show, so I stick with us. Can't wait to Let to me to abuse you for an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could be on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, have you had a good week? Yeah, quite nice. Yeah. yeah. Not, not, not really been up to much, to be honest. Not, nothing to report this week. Oh, I joined a gym. Did you? <laughs> yeah. That, that seems unlikely. Try not to sound too surprised. <laughs> Are you, are you in a gym, Steve? Yeah, of course I am, mate, yeah. Yeah. Worked out three times this week. Did you? Oh, yeah. Uh, got nothing else going on. <laughs> <laughs> but is, is that, that, much, got, uh, is that uh, how much I should be working out? Well, apparently, times? I mean, if you if you want a physique like mine... <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I'm pretty close. Yeah. yeah, it does seem like I'm between two very similar. Kind of. <laughs> well, you don't stay as trim as this, mate, unless you, uh, you do some serious, uh, benching. Do you do bench? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just said it. I know if I was a gamble. Is that, is, is that a term? I think it bench, might be. Yeah. I've got a, uh, I've got a personal trainer. Okay. Which, um, because I thought it would make me do it. Sure. And it's, it, I feel, I do love, I mean, I obviously- You love it. I love it. I can, you can see the benefit, can't you? Oh, uh, yeah, no, I, I can't do it when this is a man shouting at me. <laughs> I've, I've chose, <laughs> I chose a woman because I thought a man would be too intimidating. <laughs> Very, that is quite the insight. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm scared of the man, the big man I'm paying. He's a shout. nice lady. Oh, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's completely... Does the nice lady, do you work out harder because she, you want to impress her because she's a lady? Does no, I, work I, 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 <laughs> no, Because whenever I've worked out with a, a female trainer, I've always had the urge to not. To, to show off. Well, not to show off, but just, you know, I work, it's like, I, I'll, like, she thinks I'm pathetic and I'll show her. <laughs> I, I mean, she hasn't, vo she hasn't voiced that, I just assumed she thought I was pathetic. <laughs> is, is she an ex-girlfriend, Josh? No, that, has, does that help? Yeah, yeah. Is it, is what you're missing? Work out? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on, mate, it's ex Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, once, when, when I was supporting Steve on tour, uh, we did a workout because you're. Oh, uh, you hurt yourself. There was a gym. Didn't you? Yeah, I had to do my knee in for two months, but um, I didn't have any shorts, so I had to borrow yours. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to say they were too long. Do we have pictures of that? I I'll try and find a picture. Yeah. I'll, I'll go and try and find a picture. Now. <laughs> did you hurt your knee by tripping over them? Or yeah, something? yeah. I did that thing where I was walking along and they were getting slowly caught under my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you've had a good week. So, have you been to the gym yet? No, my induction is after this show. I go for my really? induction. Really? Yes. And what are, what are your goals joining the gym? I just want to be healthier, feel healthier, look healthier, Steve. Is that the slogan of the gym? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't say I've been very, very much immediately. Because I, I felt like I got to about sort of 35 and I just suddenly had this panic that, oh, I'm going to drop dead one yeah. day. Right, and yeah. that, you know, I should sort of, you know what I mean? I felt like the internal I, workings I mean, needed yeah. to be exercised a bit. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not a way to immortality going to the gym. No, I'm aware of that, but it might give me an extra three or four days <laughs> towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're go going for induction? Yeah, I'm excited to hear about this next week. It's going to be. <laughs> I mean, obviously, obviously, I'm going to mess it up in some. Have way. you got Have you got a sport kit? Yeah, I've got some shorts, mate, and a t-shirt, which you know I haven't worn t-shirts in years. So, have <laughs> <laughs> a t-shirt and wait. some trainers, Nikes. I mean, it's Nike not trainers go well. with a swoosh. <laughs> They're the ones that are fast, yeah. right? Yeah. Swoosh ones. Yeah. Do you have, are you having a trainer or are you just going to wing it yourself? I think I'm going to wing it. Yeah. I think I'm just going to, on my induction, I'm just going to try and, um, just, you know, I don't know if, if they withhold, do, do they withhold all the tips from you unless you have a trainer? <laughs> uh, no, they, they well, as far as I can tell, they just sort of show you how the equipment works. Brilliant. Uh, my, my concern without having a trainer is that I'm, I, I'm worried I will hurt myself yeah, in some way, you know? Like, if I'm oh, going to really? lift a weight and it'll just collapse and... I don't think I'm going to be lifting the weights. Way. What do you imagine you're going to be doing? Just running? Running, um, rowing, and cycling. You didn't need to join a gym, you can do them all outside. You do all of them anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, don't, I don't like people seeing me doing it. I don't want to run in public, That's, that was my main thing. I, I'm just thinking, in the modern world we live in, James, can you record some of your, uh kind of experiences on your oh, phone. Oh, I see. People are... Uh, yeah, I, I can do that. Yes. What, record my induction in my pocket? <laughs> if you could. Or just if... The, if whoever wear, kind of, wear a wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if... Are you tapping this induction? <laughs> <laughs> whoever cool whoever introduces you at the gym, yeah. if they analyse your fitness, if you could just record that, is really one of what I'm asking for. Oh, I see. Yeah, think you of you. Already anticipate that's going to be funny. <laughs> oh no, and then we'll play it. We'll play it out, and then we'll come back to it in like a, a year if the show lasts that long, and then we can go look at you. If I know you were. What was that? <laughs> <laughs>
I'm just a pessimist, man. Okay, right. Well, let's paint Bastille, and then um, and then we've got a game for Steve. So, um, so Eva, both of you can compete against each other. This Bastille, Pompeii. Josh Whitaker. Steve, when we um, I remember when you were promoting the Hello Ladies DVD, and you were going on quite a few things, and you said to me, your favourite is when it becomes a kind of generation game style thing. Right. Now we couldn't bring that to you, obviously. But I said this to Neil, and um, Neil likes to, um, you know. Well, I come up with a title and then a game after. Sure, that's the yeah. Carl Pilkington approach. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Neil's created a game for you that he, uh, you can compete against James for. So here we go, Neil. If you'd like to take us through it, well, it's, it's called Play Your Height Right. Yeah. And even then, I'm not quite sure how we're wording it. Are we? Are we saying Stephen is? You're six foot seven. Steve. Yeah, right. That was the the thing Neil knew, and he wanted to. No, I uh, figured out where he got the name from. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, Neil's got a list of celebrities, and you've got to go higher or lower. You two, <laughs> on on the celebrities. You mean higher or lower than than my height, or they're each other in relation to each other? Well, it will it will become clear when we when we play it. Okay. Well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so far, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm kind of not the only one. Uh, so basically, Stephen, are you? 1.3 times the height of Sue Hodge. <laughs> Am I 1.3 times the height of who? Sue Hodge, who this was. This is a celebrity I chose. Uh, Sue Hodge, who played Mimi in Hello, Hello, the small blonde one. <laughs> <laughs> Am I and you don't know how difficult it is to find out her height on Google. I it was bet, quite yeah. <laughs> um... So Sue Hodge, am I one point? So it's, is this Sue, a like, Sue Hodge one point three? But if you I stacked just, I her just up, I just say yes or no. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> if you stacked her up, is she kind of one point three versions of you? <laughs> is she one point three versions? Yes, I think she is. Genuinely, the highlight I've ever had on the radio <laughs> show is saying, "Are oh, you higher than one point three, Steve Hodges? Sue Hodges, <laughs> not Steve Hodge." <laughs> James, what do you think? Well, I'd say no if Steve's saying yes. She is 1.3 Stephen Merchants. There we are. Okay. Okay, next one. Uh, Ricky Gervais. Is he 1.45? <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work now. No, he's not 1.45. No, he's not. He's only 1.15. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Warwick James Davis. James. I'm not even sure I'm under fully understanding the maths. <laughs> I don't like, know what's going on. <laughs> what is a bit be a higher or lower? <laughs> It's Ricky Gervais. Oh, that's easy. Isn't I think it? where it would have worked. Dare I? May I, may I, may I offer some feedback yeah. for future games of this? I think I go with James here, which is that if you had just listed celebrities and you just started with Warwick Davis and then you'd said Sue Hodge, is she higher or lower? I mean, you gone higher. And then, you know, I mean, that would have worked. And Jeff Goldblum, higher. And uh, you know, Sylvester Slow, lower. And that, I'm into that. That's a great oh. game. It's exciting. It's dynamic. Well, well this is like this weird. I'm not even sure that one point. <laughs> or like, okay, go on. So it's basically, if you if you think of Sue Hodge, and then you're. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't thought of Sue Hodge since Hello Hello began. I didn't give her any. I didn't give her any thought when the show had ended. Like, on a, I would watch it on a Saturday, and then as soon as it ended, I never gave Sue Hodge another thought until it resumed again. I was too busy thinking about Vicky Michelle. <laughs> I went in a um, curry restaurant recently, but as an aside, you went into Vicky. I, no, I went into a curry restaurant in um, Buxton. Uh, they're called uh, an Indian restaurant. That's what it's called. Yeah. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're on the wall, they had Jim Davidson when he was there and Vicky Michelle when she was there. The, the two of them together? No, separate separate visits. Because that would have been a fascinating <laughs> scandal if the two of them <laughs> had showed up at a curry house together. <laughs> I say scandal. It would have been a scandal in 1989. <laughs> yeah. Gordon Kay would have been livid. <laughs> yeah. um, so. To be fair, I did think of this feature about four in the morning while trying to rock a child to sleep, so, um... Yeah, well, the, you know, And how tall is that child, <laughs> Neil? <laughs> uh, okay, let's start off. Is my newborn baby, uh, higher or lower than, uh, Warwick Davis? <laughs> uh, lower. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, the Queen, is she higher or lower than Warwick Davis? Th listen, go back to your... <laughs> you're, you're trying to freeform now and it's falling apart. Go back to the height. You've obviously done a lot of careful working out, a lot of research. I don't want to, I don't want to destroy that. <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's move on to a random one then. Bruce Forsyth, is he <laughs> one point three <laughs> three Stephen Merchants? Is he one point three? But see what you're saying. No, no, sorry, no, no, other, no, other, no, other way around. Sorry, is is one point three Bruce Forsyth Stephen Merchants height? True or false? I can't be surely because I can't <laughs> believe if you add a Bruce Forsyth on top of another Bruce Forsyth, <laughs> he's anything other. He must be much taller than me. <laughs> if you only had in three of a Bruce Forsyth. 
So it's Bruce Forsyth and then his head and shoulders again. Is that what that means? Yeah. I think so, yeah. That's the how we've worked it out, the maths. Right. Bruce Forsyth wear, wearing his own head, is that what we're saying? <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, we thought we'd booked Rachel Riley. It's all gone <laughs> bad on. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think he is. He is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> the final one, just because we've done it, are the maths. Yes. Um, Oprah Winfrey, could she be 1.4 <laughs> to get to your height, Steve? <laughs> yes. No, she's like Bruce, she's only 1.3. Oh. She's Damn. The same, same height as Forsyth. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have thought that. Um, I don't know what just happened. I don't know what's just happened. <laughs> Can I? I, I don't know. I think XFM may have just lost half its listenership. That's what <laughs> just happened. Oh my god, there's only four people listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, good luck selling the TV rights to that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the most astonishing things I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> So, that, to be fair, is worse than all of Carl Pugginson's <laughs> quizzes put together. And he's come up with some absolute nonsense. <laughs> that is genuinely the best thing you've ever done, Neil. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to the critics. Thanks. Do you know, you know, Van Gogh was never, um, you know... Appreciated in Appreciated his <laughs> time. Maybe in 200 years that quiz will be, you know, remembered. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> no, we come to the point, James, uh, of your classic scrape. Mm. Uh, the highlight of the show, as always, according to listeners, which galls me. Yeah, yeah you, you get so angry. You've <laughs> 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 sent me so much coming in. Is it a uh, classic scrape, or is it one from uh, this week? This is an archive. An one. archive is nothing, all, all those this week was join a gym, and that hasn't... Really, I'll just join that so I can get more future scrapes. <laughs> I'm running out of stuff. But, uh, 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 this was a few years ago when I worked at... Do you remember when I worked at a school? Yeah. That was a classroom assistant for a bit. I, I just moved to London and, and, and moved in with three people who I, d I didn't know at all. And um, we were all very bad at uh, maintaining the house. We were supposed to be, like, the garden especially. But, but the, the house in general was a mess. And mm. the girls once put up a, a cleaning rotor without having discussed it with everyone, which I think is a bit... Ooh, yeah, right that there. always leads to trouble. I think you've got to sit everyone down and go... We should all start doing cleaning. What do you think about a cleaning rotor? Instead, I went down one morning and on the fridge was a colour-coded cleaning rotor. My main, my main problem with it was that my name was in brown, <laughs> which suggested I was the messiest one in the house. Everyone else was like greens and blues. And I was Were you the messiest green. in the house? No way, man. Keith was. Oh, not Keith. <laughs> Keith. Now, what was Keith's biggest sin? I mean, what would he... Keith didn't do anything in the house, didn't help out at all, but one of those girls was his girlfriend, so she wasn't going to tell him off in front of everyone. Of course. Oh, Typical. What colour was Keith? Keith was blue, a nice deep ocean blue. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. The more I hear about this Keith guy, <laughs> the less I like him. It was awful. He, he would sit there playing... He, he, he'll never listen to this. Keith, <laughs> Keith used to play fantasy roleplay games all the time. Oh. And, and he had a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, he had a girlfriend. <laughs> Did you have a girlfriend at the time? I didn't have a girlfriend. Right, you must feel really bad. <laughs> also, but I wasn't doing myself any favours in that house, because I, I had, um... I'd bought the only blanket I had at home, and I've had it all the way through as a child, so I didn't think of it as anything weird but then it was it was this uh, blanket of a, a tiger roaring just a, a tiger's head that would fill the whole of my bed so it's this massive tiger yeah. head just growling <laughs> and so uh, did you ever did you ever bring a girl back get to the bedroom and then that was the no no i never had that but my, my housemates did look in and go meanwhile there's a guy next door playing role play <laughs> <laughs> getting gently <laughs> <laughs> you know, the ladies <laughs> um, so there was a cleaning rotor it's cleaning rotor but the garden was not included on that rotor and we all neglected the garden and it, mm. it got out of control it was a proper and eventually the neighbors uh dobbed us out to the landlord oh, the neighbors phoned not... them up and so what, uh, what, can you give us a picture of what that garden looked like? I mean, it was just very overgrown. Yeah, basically, it was just like weeds and grass that were like higher than most of us by then. It was ridiculous yeah. by yeah. the end. It was, uh, well, I couldn't look out the kitchen window because I'd feel ashamed. Sure. Well, there's just grass. What we'd done, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keith loved it. He'd go outside in there and play wizards. <laughs> <laughs> with Get with lost mates. in the enchanted forest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find a, a, an elf sitting on a toadstool yeah. we could tell yeah. him the way to the castle. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> he loved it. But the best of yeah, us, really. Furious, yeah. Really and the neighbours would look on. And the, the neighbours would look over and get annoyed. I'm always, I always feel sorry for neighbours who live next door to basically students. Mm. Yeah. No, often like a lovely retired couple. Yeah. They, they spent year, house proud, they spent year, and they got the couple of plebs <laughs> next door who don't have any, <laughs> any, oh, God. No regard, worse. don't care. Ethan James next door. So the, 
<laughs> so yeah, they, they ratted us out, and the, the landlord phoned us up and said, "Just I'm um, going to come round and do an inspection this week on Saturday. So if you need to sort anything out before I get round there, then that'd be good." So we panicked. Sure. Yeah. But I, I worked at the school, uh, and I knew that there's a gardener there, so I asked the gardener if I could borrow some equipment from him. <laughs> And I thought he'll give me some, like, shears or something like that. He gave me the strimmer, the proper... Oh, the head strimmer. The full-on yeah. strimmer yeah. to use. Yeah. Um, did you carry it across London? I did. I, I had to put it in two bin bags, one from either end. It looked like a, an entire... Up with rope in the middle. It looked like I had a dead body on the tube. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking that I mean, that, that would be a very, um... A very confident way for a murderer to dispose of a body, <laughs> wouldn't it? By tube. That's Probably could work, you know, in plain view. Hide in plain view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Of course this is a strimmer. Uh, <laughs> Everyone just assume, yeah, it's yeah. got a strimmer in there. There's no way it's a dead body, despite the smell. But I, I got I got back home, and they were, I was really like, don't worry, guys, guess what I've got? And mm. they were really excited I had the strimmer. Plugged it in. I went outside, and I remember them all watching me from inside, and I turned it on, and it just... It strammed beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really amazing. Excellent action. Amazing, it, amazing. Was it one of the kind of ones with the little sort of petrol motor, or was it an electric? It was thing? electric, so I had to plug it in. Sure. Run and the have, the, have the wire coming through the kitchen window. You know the you know, the top kitchen window that's long and thin? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, all it's used for is putting wires through. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> like that. And I was strimming, I was, well, I was strimming one-handed, and it was so easy. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arrogant. So, oh, well, what were you doing with your other hand? The other hand, I, I, I was waving to the, the onlookers. <laughs> no, but I, 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 you, you joke. I was throwing gang signs to my friends on the inside to yeah. key for the gang. Yeah. <laughs> Just doing the gang signs like this is brilliant. I've got a streamer. And then um, I saw their faces changed from delight to horror. Really, and then turn around and realise that the cable had got wrapped up in the strimmer. Oh my word! I was currently being shredded while I was holding oh, it. Oh my word! And this was after like thirty seconds of strimming. Like sure. I, I, I've done very little. Very little. Committing strimming. kind of Harry Carey. <laughs> yes, <laughs> immediately. I thought for a minute you were going to say you'd sliced Keith's head off. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was sat amongst his people in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Game over, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So you started chopping at the wire, shredding the wire up. Immediately, uh, the, the, the strimmer stopped and the whole house short-circuited. The whole, <laughs> all the wow. lights in the house went off. Everything stopped. I think someone had some washing on that stopped. Yeah. It, it was, Why it was did just, the whole house short-circuit? I don't know. I think there's this thing. <laughs> did Mr. Jenkins, the landlord, come in at that moment? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, just seeing how, what the hell? What? <laughs> <laughs> These lights aren't working. <laughs> You're doing my washing, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> So that was ruined immediately. We yeah. had to do the rest of the garden with. So basically, um, it was like if 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 the if the if the garden was a person's head of hair. Yeah. You, it's that thing where you just <laughs> that you were going to give a full shave of the head yeah. and you've yeah. just got one patch missing. Yeah. And then and absolutely else is, to go. I broke the I broke, I broke the electric shears. We're going to have yeah, to do the yeah, rest yeah. with scissors, which were not. It, at the end, it did look like somebody was trying to cut their own hair when we actually did the shears oh, did you around that. Not? Yeah, we had to do it with shears the whole garden. It was awful. But I was mainly scared about returning the strimmer of course, mm, of course. to the school. And I, I'm a, I I panicked so much about things. And I was trying to guess, instead of Googling how much a strimmer was, I tried to guess, how much would you guess the strimmer is? 100 quid? 100 quid. More? Yeah, probably about yeah. 100, yeah. 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. I guessed 2,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> In my head, I was like, it's got to be two grand. Yeah. I've just, I've just thrown away two grand. I can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> and I was really panicking on the, on the tube on the way back with it now in two bags. No, it's in one. <laughs> but like, taking it back in this bag and I got so to why was it, wasn't it, couldn't you just replace the wire? Well, I thought I probably could, but uh, I, I just yeah. panic way too much in this situation and think I'm going to have to buy an entire new strimmer. And I got yeah. back and I gave it to the head teacher. I said, look, he, he said, did you, did, you, did you find it useful? I said, for a while. <laughs> but <laughs> I then, uh, I then strammed through my own wire. <laughs> And I've, I've broken the head it. Teachers went, I don't think Stram is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a word. You shouldn't be working at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching the kids well. <laughs> We're doing some drumming. I drummed with them the other day for ages. <laughs> um, uh, so, I, so I had to tell them I broke it, and uh, I thought I was going to get in trouble. And he just went, "It's all right. We'll get Patrick to fix it." And I was like, "What else can I borrow?" <laughs> <That's> great! <laughs> I just borrow everything, take it home. It doesn't come back to haunt me. I can just yeah, yeah. berserk. There's no consequences. Just so ruin everything. Went home with a blackboard, wrote your own rotor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, myself in glistening white. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, uh, so did you get away? The landlord was fine when he came in. It was all. Spotting. He was fine. He, I mean, he obviously came round and knew 
What yeah. about, you could look at the garden and go, well, you've clearly yeah. just rushed this. But, but you made we got away. Yeah, we got away with it. He said, lovely rotor. <laughs> in the end, in the end, we had to stop using the cleaning rotor, genuinely, because we couldn't read it because it was too dirty. <laughs> 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 well, you know, your life's come on since then. You've joined a gym. Yeah, I've joined I'm a gym. worried at leaving you in charge of, you know, the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing gang signs on the treadmill <laughs> yeah. to everyone else. Josh Whittaker. Uh, just got time uh, to thank you for coming in, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Josh. And uh, to, uh, any plugs you have now, James? Yep, uh, the tour, the tour that I've been promoting every single week for forever, it mm. seems, has ended this week, so, uh, oh. yeah, sorry, mate. Uh, Exeter on Monday. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, then, uh, Birmingham on Thursday at the Glee, and ending in Kettering on the 30th. Homecoming gig. You're homecoming gig. Homecoming gig. That's gonna be end. glorious. Yeah. It's like wait. gonna be Blur at Mile End, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it will be exactly like that. That's what, every time I go there, that's exactly how I'm treated. Wow. Well, but, well done. Uh, I mean, well done for getting to the end of it. Thanks, mate. Cheers, it's really impressive. Um, <laughs> Steve? Well, obviously you can catch the last few episodes of my, uh, Sky Atlantic show, Hello Ladies, Wednesdays, 10pm, um, mm. or probably illegally download it, <laughs> seems to be what most people on Twitter are doing, <laughs> proudly telling me they've already watched all the episodes that haven't been screened in this country yet. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Do you, <laughs> do you reply to those tweets? No, of course I don't. No. No. Listen, I, I'm not doing it for the, uh, eyeballs that are watching it officially on Scott Of course, I'm, I'm obviously just watching I'm just doing it for the fans. Oh, yeah. And however they may <laughs> access it. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you what I would like to plug, yeah. if you haven't seen it yet, is the forthcoming film Noah. No, I've not seen it. Directed by Darren Aronofsky. You'll know him from Black Swan, yeah. Oscar winning. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you haven't seen the trailer for this, it's an absolute gem. It's, um, it's, uh, they've, it's Russell Crowe. Yeah. And he plays Noah. Yeah. Biblical Noah, not yeah. just a guy so called Noah. And he wakes up, as they only do in movies, with that kind of, when you sit bolt upright, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he wakes up like that, which I've never woke up like that no. from a scary dream. And to be fair, he is getting messages from God in his dreams. Yeah. And, uh, is Meth Methuselah, who I think might be his father, or just a wise old man, played yeah. by, um, Sir Anthony Hopkins. He wow, says something cast. like, yeah, he says something like, you know, but, uh, he's, he's angry. God's angry. <laughs> and, um, and there's some rain, there's a, or the, 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 I think the rain comes later, but there's rain yeah. promised. Yeah. So he immediately sets to work building an ark, um, with, uh, the help of, like, a couple of other people and Emma Watson. Oh, yeah. So Hermione from Harry Potter, she's helping build the ark. <laughs> this, I'm definitely gonna go and see this. Right. Uh, well, you think, you think you're already excited, so he's building the ark. What problems can there be? I mean, he's just gotta build the ark before yeah. the flood comes. But given that God has told him build it before the flood comes, I'm assuming God's keeping the flood on hold yeah, until yeah. the ark's built. Hang on a minute, there's only trouble from a neighbouring village. <laughs> Who's this? Who's this, the leader of this sort of, this gang of, you know, ne'er-do-wells? It's only Ray Winston. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ray Winston comes over and basically says, Oi, Noah, you muffet! <laughs> <laughs> Give me your ark. Give me your ark. Or some such, yeah. you know, something along those lines. <laughs> and uh, and then R Russell Crowe as Noah keeps saying things like no, you know, and, very, <laughs> and everything everything Noah says is a sort of is a kind of, you know, it's it's very kind of epic and yeah. So it's like uh, M. Watson will say, you know, um. It's all over! And he'll say things like, No, it's just beginning. <laughs> and, uh, Do, and then, any animals appeared by this point? Well, no, and then, so then towards the end of the trailer, the, uh, you see the ark kind of half finished, and then the animals flood on, and there's the, all the animals running on, including some animals that Darren Aronofsky has made up. <laughs> <laughs> Not even all real animals. And then it kind of, there's, it, then there's a boom, and then you just see the snakes. All the snakes oh, are getting on board. Yeah. And they, it's not clear how he's summoned. It's like he's just gone with like a giant horn, yeah. <laughs> and then all the snakes of the world. So is that? Is that and then, and then, but there's like a little moment of humour because like um, Noah's wife goes, "Really, Noah? The snakes?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then and then it sort of ends with a kind of preposterous. The, I think that he's one raindrop lands on his nose, oh, and yes. Noah looks up, and then it kind of cuts to uh, the, the water crashing in, and he goes, "Noah." This it's amazing. it's. I mean, so it's, it's just utter nonsense. The film take place before the flood. Yeah, well, he's yeah. building it before the flood arrives. No, no, but I mean, is there then flood in the film? Or is I would assume the last yeah. act is the flood. Yeah, if, if they skip on the flood, they have missed a massive trip. <laughs> 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 it's yeah. the best bit of that story. Unless they're going to sort of do it Hobbit-like and string it out <laughs> yeah. for sort of four or five films. <laughs> First film is just carpet. Wow. I'm just, are you going to go? Of course I'm going to go. You I'm really me? excited about that. We'll, uh, we'll tweet the trailer from XFM. Apparently it's based more on the graphic novel <laughs> Noah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. I'm not making that, that up. There's yeah. a graphic novel There's a Noah? graphic novel called Noah. Well, apparently there's been test screenings that. and some of the uh, test audiences who are religious are not happy because they feel that um, he 
he's he's changed the original story. <laughs> <laughs> He's not got the facts exactly. Yeah, yeah. This, this one's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to read the book first, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I mean, I'm going to plug now, but I feel like it's, it's, all, it's all academic after Noah. Um, I'm in Melton Mowbray tonight. Any so. Ray Winston? Uh, Ray Winston might be halfway <laughs> through. Or Come in and demand my microphone. Do a wry observation on life <laughs> when you were young. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also, I should uh, plug that my DVD is now out. On, um, in, uh, in shops. We were never allowed to do no. that on Classic XFM. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but then you weren't allowed to play Biffy Clyro twice well, in three hours, so. Good news for you, Josh. My friend Graham texted me this morning that we know he's going to be asking for your DVD for Christmas. So, yes. uh, congratulations, mate. I'd like to point, when is the DVD released? It was uh, released on Monday. So it's already available, I'm sure, for illegal download. <laughs> 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 well, Neil earlier on alerted me to the fact it was being streamed on YouTube, but then there apparently it wasn't. And, so it's uh, been taken down. Oh, you can find it. Don't worry, it's out there, guys. You'll find it online. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, coming up, Matt Dyson, um, who will be here, you know, doing this, the same old stuff. And we've got, uh, we've got a bonus podcast this week, haven't we? Yeah, we have, we have. I, the reason I said that Matt Dyson thing like that is I know that that's the bit he listens to. I always pick him up slightly too much, it looks disingenuous. <laughs> but I swung too far the other way this time. I caught myself, uh, and um, so we have a bonus, bonus podcast, which is an interview with Reg Hunter. Here is a clip of what it sounded like. There's a little secret in the black community that anything that white people don't understand, they call it art. <laughs> <laughs> and that's him talking about Noah. So, uh, <laughs> so that is also available for download. Josh Whittaker. Yes.